On what grounds does France believe it can continue to impose leaders on us and make choices on our behalf? This is Usman Sonko, mentor to newly elected president of Senegal, Basiru Diomaye Faye. This must come to an end, and the emerging Africa, the African youth, the African elites, and the African diaspora all stand united in saying no, it cannot continue any longer. Senegal has a new president, and he's the youngest elected president in Africa. Okay. How old is he? I think he's early 40s. Early 40s? Yeah. Why is this significant? I believe, it's my belief, that Africa is rising. It has many problems to fix, mm -hmm. but it is rising. And I believe the West, America, UK, mm -hmm. Europe, is mm -hmm. on the decline. On top of that, there is significant risk of war happening right now in the global stage. Okay. For many regions, war is already there. Mm -hmm. Israel, Palestine, Russia, Ukraine, mm -hmm. and US and the UK are involved in both of those wars in like indirect ways mm -hmm. supplying arms supplying support here and there condemning one side or the other so there is a negative trend happening in the west i also want to point out something but first what we're going to do is listen to a speech and we're going to react it is high time for france to lift its knee off our neck and put an end to this unjust oppression centuries of misery Human trafficking, colonization, and neocolonization have caused immeasurable suffering. It's time to put an end to this cycle of oppression. It's high time for France to leave us alone. It's time for France to take a cue from its European neighbors and learn a valuable lesson in independence. Germany is the leading economic power in Europe, significantly surpassing France which is ranked as the third or fourth largest economic power globally. Germany does not exploit any country, any colony. I can mention Italy, I can mention Spain, who had colonies before, but who do not exploit anyone, who do not interfere, who do not impose leaders in their former colonies. The first thing I just want to say is, he is extremely articulate. His command of English is high quality, mm -hmm. and he's speaking very calmly professionally in a politically correct manner which is the language that the west understands okay. he's not he's not speaking with some broken english or and uh, the other thing is when you see some of the other african countries that don't speak english you know it doesn't impact the same way when the english speakers are listening because they have to read subtitles or things are being translated mm. and sometimes a little bit is lost in the power of the delivery mm. but when the english is so precise mm. uh it's much more powerful on what grounds does france believe it can continue to impose leaders on us and make choices on our behalf this must come to an end and the emerging africa the african youth the african elites and the african diaspora all stand united in saying no, it cannot continue any longer. I mean, this just feels so inspiring. He's telling the French to their faces in a professional manner, you don't have any jurisdiction here anymore. We've had centuries of you controlling us. Mm -hmm. And this is at the same time when France has been kicked out of all of the French speaking countries, Burkina Faso, Gabon, all the countries in the Sahel. So you are seeing these young, powerful, um, inspirational, smart, intelligent <clears throat> leaders come to the forefront. France's hypocrisy is evident and pervasive in daily life. Let's examine the cases of Mali and Chad as prime examples of this hypocrisy. In Chad, where the constitutional process has been interrupted, France applauded and its president visited to officially consecrate the new king's coronation ceremony. In Mali, where it is not the constitutional process that has been interrupted, but the transition process, France has condemned and even packed up its things to say that it is leaving Mali. That's hypocrisy. It's the double standard. It is the double language that France employs in its dealings with Africa. This is how France deals with African issues. Personally, we expect absolutely nothing from France. We desire her to cease meddling in our matters so that the people of Senegal 
can exercise their freedom of choice rather than being influenced by France's selection of a candidate using the tactics we are aware of. Oh. Right. Powerful. Powerful. <laughs> For too many years, the West and their colonizing ideals have been invested in Africa in lopsided deals, deals that do not benefit the masses, that benefit small people. We know this, we don't have to rehash this, I guess, but we're still in, as an African continent, not free of this. That is on two sides. They are the ones coming to do their nonsense, but at the same time, we have those that are in the continent that are corruptible. Mm. And what we hope is these new leaders, like this young gentleman here, are the new wave that will not put personal gain in front of the people. And we watch vigilantly to see that this kind of talk is backed up with real actions. You know, we really hope, we really hope for that. We begin by targeting individuals, adorning them with the Legion of Honor or a similar knightly rank, enlisting them in Masonic lodges and informing them to prepare themselves as they will be next in line. This is what we're talking about. Those people, they come, they say, you're going to have these riches. We're going to do mm -hmm. this. He talks about Masonic lodges. I mean, that's deep stuff to bring out in the public like this. Mm -hmm. And again, it shows his understanding of the way the world works and his Sting intelligence. them in Masonic lodges and informing them to prepare themselves as they will be next in line. Even the hypothesis that Makisal may not succeed. We know who is being prepared by France. This must come to an end. It will not occur in this manner any longer. Let's be clear. We have absolutely nothing against the French people. In France, both political and citizen voices are rising to hold and express the same discourse as the one I'm currently presenting to you. For example, the deputies, such as Mrs. Frédéric Dumas, who regularly speaks on the platform of the Assembly, who regularly writes to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, since she is a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, to raise this unfair behavior of France towards Africa, hold the same speech as us. The same Mr. Jean-Luc Mélenchon, Jean-Paul Lecoq, André Chassain, all deputies, hold the same discourse as us and hundreds and hundreds of other voices. We strongly urge France to listen to the voices that speak to it about our plan for a more collaborative, fairer, and sustainable partnership between Africa and France. It is crucial that we work together towards a future that is equitable, just, and environmentally conscious. If she listens, I believe we'll have beautiful days ahead in our collaboration together. If he doesn't know how to cut it, thinking he can continue to function like in the time of our grandfathers, this African youth no longer accepts it. France must make preparations for a definitive break and completely withdraw from Africa. Africa belongs to Africans, not France. She belongs to no one else. Neither China, nor the United States, nor anyone else. So, I mean, there's just so much there. He didn't burn the bridge, right? He said, you're welcome to come here if you act according to what our rules and standards are. Mm. If you act fairly, bring it on. Let's do it. Mm. There's a beautiful future ahead for us. Mm. Also, on the back end, mentioning China, mentioning the US, it's a secondary quiet warning saying, look, just because France is out of the picture, that we don't want other con con countries to come and fill the void trying to do the same nonsense. Africa belongs to Africa. Right. The people that should benefit from whatever deals, whatever situations of prosperity that happen, are here on the ground in Africa. Let them prosper. You can make your deals and prosper in your place. We let us prosper here as well. The deals should not be that only you prosper and we are here in squalor and, and dis dysfunction. Now look at Africa. You've got young, vibrant leaders in their 40s, 35, 40 years old, dynamic, energy, fit, in good shape, with energy and spirit for years to come. This is another um, expression of the decline of the West, the rise of Africa. The demographics of Africa, the mean age of Africans is 19 years old. The growth is in front of them. 
the, they're, they're going to have families in the next 10 years, 15 years. They're going to come into their economic own. They have the ability to see what's happening online, take advantage of global markets as well as local markets, because everything is opening up. Infrastructure is improving. Communication is improving. Education is there on the internet. You can learn anything you want online. Yeah. And everyone is having access to a smartphone. More and more and more and more in Africa, smartphones are ubiquitous and everywhere. Data, internet is getting cheaper. These people are, are becoming educated, smart, sophisticated, and they're young. The populace is growing. Go to any demographics of Europe and America. It's on the decline. They're not, the birth rate is not um, at replacement. The birth rate is less than replacement. Japan, same thing. America, same thing. UK, same thing. People want, uh, want one child, want two child. Oh, I want to live my best life. I don't want kids messing up my life. The, it's stagnation. It's not growing. It's not expanding. But in Africa, these young people are taking grasp of the land. They're taking grasp of the resources in front of them. And the space is growing. Populations are growing. Kampala is the city I'm in right now. It's expanding ridiculously, ground-wise. There's development everywhere, there's growth everywhere. Why? Because population is growing. Just that alone. People are migrating here, people are moving here. Dynamic things are happening. This is the spirit that is in the streets of Africa, in the streets of Kampala. That is why I, I'm an advocate for diasporas to come back to the continent and see what is happening here even if you can't relocate here, you can at least see what's going on and get involved in your own way. I'm not saying this is for everybody. If you come from the West, coming to Africa is very tough. I have a lot of difficult situations I have to deal with and I have doubts and fears just like everybody else. I'm making a relationship, I'm making business, I'm growing and I'm seeing the dynamic nature of the, of the land that I'm in. And it's beautiful to see, it's wonderful to see. You can see this beautiful, view behind us it's just an inspiring place please leaders you've come you talk the talk you've walked the walk please let's not embroil ourselves in in uh in fraudulent and uh corrupt ways don't get enveloped by the system and get drunk on power let's distribute the benefits to the wider community you're talking a good game we're behind you 100 don't let us down